All right, traders, good afternoon. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and it is Wednesday, 4.30. And, uh, wow, what a big day for the market. Uh, just to look at some of these numbers here, SPY was up 4.2%. Qs were up just about the same, up 4.17%. Uh, IWM trailed a little bit, was up 2.85%. Uh, but still, uh, overall, very strong. Just the yeah, and then you know, if, if you go through the sectors here, um, really surprising to me. I didn't see this. I didn't catch this. But utilities was were among the biggest. Was one of the biggest uh, or best performing groups of the day, up just about five point seven percent. XLV, uh, you know, names like UNH, uh, Humana were up very big. Uh, the the uh, healthcare providers, uh, and there's a, there is an ETF for that. It's IHF, as in Frank. That was up about nine point, uh, excuse me, eight point nine percent today. Just huge move uh, by healthcare today, as well as specifically the healthcare providers were up big. But to see XLV up five point seven percent, biotech also did very well. You could see all these groups. Uh, this is the performance for the day, and this was performance. Uh, from the open, so really give you an opportunity to actually do some trading today. The other thing that I noticed today was the VIX. Uh, it did go down today. It was down 13%. Uh, it closed right around 32, uh, which is like if you were trading options today, this was a perfect storm for you or per in, a, in a good way uh, because usually when you have an equity rally, the volatility starts to come out, but, uh, you know, still at around a 32 uh what happens a lot of times is like i would almost expect like the vix to go down to like a 25 26 here but um but it didn't and that means that the that the that the there was no major volatility crush today which as always like sucks the premium out right because the volatility is a component of option pricing and normally when you have something like that the options get cheaper as the market is going up but perhaps that the market is still moving fast remember volatility uh it's it's usually you know goes up because the market tends to go down faster than it goes up all right did i say that right usually volatility increases when the market goes down because it goes down faster than it goes up today it went up very very quickly so uh it this was a non-traditional day when you see the market go up this much, uh, this much faster than normal, right? Usually, as they say, it stairs up and elevator down or escalator down. Uh, so I think that's why the VIX kind of hung in there today. What I thought was, was pretty interesting is TLT, which which was just about was about positive for most for the most part of the day. Uh, it, you know, some really good levels uh, to watch in the bonds as well as equities today. But look at this thing, you know, crumble for the for the majority of the day. It was it was sitting above value. It kind of came in here once, twice, and then really the third time uh, was when this thing broke. And right around three o'clock uh, was when this thing started to sell off. Same in TLT. If you're looking at TLT, TLT, you know, a little bit different. It's different duration, so it is different bonds. But um, this thing tried to break out actually a few times today, and this was when it was up about 40, 50 basis points, um, and then it really sold off. Uh, I guess a little bit different time frame there. TLT started to sell off around 12 o'clock, and then really took a dive there in the last hour of the day. So that kind of confirmed the more of a risk-on move, uh, move into equities out of bonds. Uh, also, if you looked at the S&P, a level that we kept on going over throughout the session, uh, right around the open, uh, was the top of value, which is basically where we hit at 7.30. Um, I sent that chart around, and then we touched it here on the open. We touched it here, so once, twice, and I didn't see it really here, but once, twice, and then three times it took off. So again, you know, really, really nice. It even kind of hung around here for a little bit and then, you know, kind of put in a little bit of a bull flag and, and then got going today. So, so this was a, a, a nice day. Um, I don't, um, you know, this will be a kind of a short video because I think right now, even though the VIX was down today, it's still around a 30. I think just overall, you kind of take the, this basically one day at a time, you know, and look for some really nice setups uh, that we caught. Uh, yesterday, I thought the home builders looked pretty good. I went long some uh, some DHI, uh, which I thought was was setting up pretty nicely with the move in interest rates. Uh, you could see a whole bunch of other things that I did. I actually got rid of my last Palladium 
Uh, I'm still holding that in the tactical portfolio, but in my trading account, I got rid of it. Uh, I tried a position. I was either going to go long. Uh, we set this up pre-market. If you go to my commentary in the beginning of the day, uh, I was looking at an exchange stock, and I said either um, I'm either looking at CME or TW. I think I, I picked incorrectly. I went long TW. Uh, I looked at the options in CME, and it just didn't. Uh, they looked a little bit too wide in the morning, and look at what this look at what this stock did today, up three and a half percent. So I mapped this out. Now I am long this, so it's fine. Um, I'm long it in the in the tactical portfolio. I wanted to put it on as well in, in my trading account, but um, wow, right to the VPOC, real nice move in the CMA, and got going. You know, gave a little hesitation there. And that's when I was watching it on the first five minute bar and I saw the second five minute bar fall into value and then I kind of abandoned it today. I thought I set an alert, but I, I must have missed it. But um, I hope you got involved in it today. And I said 223, look at that, 223 is short term resistance. So I put this out at eight o'clock in the morning uh, on the one hour chart. So as I went over in last night's video, if you're it, and there it is resistance up at 223 is basically where we went and also the five minute uh, virgin point of control so you know really mapping this out uh, i talked a lot about using the market webs which is the indicator that i use which gives you know basically one standard deviation of price time and volume and it really gives some great support and resistance levels to trade around because they they do end up being significant so this was a this was a nice setup even though i didn't get to this one today but um uh, you could see that uh this is my setup and it worked really well i also said ice doesn't look bad either so again put this out at 8 40 in the morning so trades that i did because again i always like to give you the examples of what i did um, I started to look at a couple things. Number one, healthcare was going nuts today with um, with the Super Tuesday results. But also, I started to look at some dividend names because you know dividend equity dividends are yielding a lot more than what Treasuries are. So I looked at a name and I, I picked J and J because um, it really hadn't done anything, and you could see real nice move today. But if you look at this on the daily chart, I thought this had a great, you know, had a great chance to move um, up until here, which was I, I wasn't expecting to be it to be a day trade. But I mean, the damn thing was up 5.8 percent. So this works really well. I don't think I, I held it to the highs of the day, but um, you could see my targets that I took in this thing. And I actually added to it. I actually added to a winner. Um, I tried getting in here some and then I added to it at 580 just to confirm that it was going the right way. Um, I did a little day trading in Snap both ways. One worked, the other one didn't. VRTX was a big winner um, for a lot of people in the room today. I mean, what a move in this stock. <laughs> it's almost back to 52-week highs. This is up $17 today. Unreal, some of the uh, strength. And again, it, you know, when the dust settles, and even you know, looking at a day like this to see what days outperform like this, uh, or what days have this nice relative strength, I should say, to it. Uh, what else? Oh, I put on this limited risk reversal. I got out of Lulu yesterday, right? And then, um, you know, again using the value areas, this was uh, brought to my attention by someone in the room that it was down a couple percent. Look at the virgin point of control takeout. And I got into it right here. It actually went a little bit lower. And then the damn thing took off. So I did a limited risk reversal. I've talked about this in the room. Uh, this is great uh, you know, for playing options when in a higher volatility environment, you're selling some premium by selling a put spread if you're bullish and going long calls. Uh, that's great because uh, in, in the case of if it doesn't move, you don't just lose on the premium. Uh, but you can make money on both sides. Now, the danger, of course, is you are taking more risk. And that's why I always put the total of the risk, you know, per contract. Which is here. But but by selling a put spread, you're, you're reducing um, the cost of the call, which is, you know, higher than expected now because of the volatility. 
All right, guys, in a few other trades I put on Amazon, I, I played a, an Amazon call spread. Again, I, I don't have a crystal ball, and I don't know what the market's going to do. With the market moving this fast, uh, I took off a lot of option exposure. Um, I also took off the DHI today, too. Um, I just thought, you know, on a 4% day for my um, trading account, this was a great day. Let's not be greedy. Let's fight to live another day, and we'll go from there. Um, Zoom, a couple of names that reported after the close. Tale of a couple different markets here. MRVL. I think we took out a five-minute VPOC right there. Uh, we also took out one on the one hour, which was, which was from last week's. Uh, Splunk a little bit different. I would buy Splunk if it gets down to this VPOC down here. Let's see if it comes up. But I don't think it got in the vicinity. It was a little bit too far down. 126 is where I'd be a buyer. And Zoom, um, this is straight. You know, this thing has been moving on by the rumor. And I said sell the virus. I thought that was funny. Um, on this, it'll be interesting to say what they what they say on their conference call. There was also a really good point, and and that was made in the in the trading room today, is that people are using, companies are using Zoom, but you don't need a subscription per user, right? You only need one per like you know a hundred people or two hundred people. So um, I don't know how they're going to make money, you know, via not per user. They're, I don't think they're maximizing the situation, but. We'll see what they say on their earnings calls. All right, guys, have a great night. Thanks for, uh, for watching the video, and I'll see you tomorrow.